<laughs> greetings, greetings, soul family. I pray that you are well and that you are having a blessed and abundant day. Uh, for those of you who are starting the day, grand rising. And for those who are in the afternoon half of their day, I hope that your day was well. Um, I'm a mentee, the awakener, I'm a mentee, the oracle. And I am dropping on today because I woke up this morning and I received some information. Greetings, Raphael. I hope that you are well. Yeah, please do, when you come in the room, say hello. Let me know where you're coming in from. So I'm a divine channel. And um, this rising, when I woke up this morning... Um, I received some information that I was guided to share with the collective and so that's what I'm jumping on to do. Now I'm currently fasting and praying at the moment um, and there's a lot of different things happening collectively for us, especially since the eclipse, um, but collectively for us we are in the year of karmic clearing we are in the year of the eight which is all about breaking chains and it's all about clearing karma and what you can see on the world stage is that there is a lot of karmic debts that are being cleared you are seeing pe um, people who were in high profile industries and communities um being brought down and i would want to speak about that because that is a psyop um being brought down and being held accountable for their actions supposedly allegedly um, but this is going to be the year of revelation. This is going to be the year of revealing of truth. And um, yeah, just over the past couple of days, especially since the eclipse, the so-called veil, which really there isn't a veil right now because we are able to connect directly to the source. The veil is revealing um, to us the things that have been hidden from us for especially the past 2000 years. Um, the, the past 2000 years is the time of the age of Pisces and it talks about, not even talks about, the experience that we have had as a collective has been about separation. Separation from ourselves, separation from the divine, the divine being an external um, reference and also our separations from families, separation man and woman, just constant separation and that is the experience um, and the environment of Pisces. It is about learning through separation so as we're embarking on this easter weekend um for me one i don't know if anybody else has felt like this but i didn't even realize that easter was coming this weekend um and normally especially since as a child i've always been tapped into that story that information um around you know the christ and around the crucifixion like this thing was ingrained within my family even though they weren't necessarily remotely um spiritual and if you're from the west indies cult culture and community you know that that stuff is really a deep part of our culture however a lot of that stuff was um imposed on us in 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 the way in which we understand it and celebrate it and as we come into this awakening we are being really asked to look at some of the belief systems that we have and whether they are really in alignment with truth uh, whether they are really in alignment with truth because to believe something means to convince yourself that it is true and that it is real or to be convinced that it is true or it is real and we are moving from the age of belief into the age of knowing and so in order for us to move into the age of knowing and become the knower again if you look at the metaphysics of what the knower is the knower's story it's about you coming off of that ledge of being directed and governed by the status quo and by the masses and you tapping into that truth within you so that you become the one that knows you be you become the one that has a direct connection with the divine now for the past 2000 years the religious practices or the religious systems have all been around us outsourcing our connection to the divine whether it be through prophets whether it be through whatever beings us outsourcing that connection when really what it's supposed to do was to help us to deepen and strengthen our connection to ourselves and the source within understand how to utilize the laws of the universe and how to be the christ itself which means us being in our divinity being aware of ourselves mastering our higher and lower selves and living from the heart right but religion was also one of the tools that was used to desensitize human human beings and disconnect them from the source and that is how this planet has essentially become a slave planet that is how for the past two thousand years certain doctrines mindsets conditions programs programs and beliefs have been implanted into the consciousness of each human or the masses of humans 
where they've outsourced their divinity, where they're disconnected from the source. Like I speak to so many people who are like, you know what? I don't know how to connect with God or I don't know how to connect with the source or I don't know how to connect to my purpose. I don't know how to connect to my power. These are things that religion and religious practices were supposed to teach us. Now, people are seeing this resurgence and this reconnection back to the understanding of spirituality. And spirituality is the foundation of a lot of the indigenous practices, the indigenous cultures that have been on this planet from since the beginning of its inception and beginning of time so in this short 2000 year space of time if you if you uh, compare it to the rest of um, humans evolution you will see that we've been in a fallen state we have been in a fallen state our awareness is not nowhere near the awareness of even some of the most civilization civilized um, societies that we had and so as we are awakening up we are awakening up to the fact that we have to disconnect and deprogram and decondition ourselves from some of the beliefs that we hold dear to and that can be challenging because that's where cognitive dissonance can come up if you have been taught your whole life about the story of christ and you see that as real and you don't recognize that that story is about you then when new information comes to you you won't be able to receive it you will have that conflict and that is the power of mind control and brainwashing and indoctrination now as i said i'm not against any form of religion what i am doing is just sharing the divine downloads that have been coming from me and really testing the spirits what does that mean questioning all of the belief systems that i have the programs that are running within my consciousness that even are in conflict with each other this is what is about what awakening is about we have to recognize that we have been asleep and so the things that we think are true the things that we think we know aren't actually true and what you're seeing happening on the world stage is we are going through a karmic clearing and we're also going through a karmic awakening and what that means is all of your belief systems all of the falsehoods and securities that have been developed for you based on illusion whether you think it's safety through your color or whether you feel like it's safety through social class or money all of that stuff is being dismantled right and we are being really ushered into understanding what unity is right and, and, and the only, only way we can do that is by understanding our connection to each other now we have been governed by the lower self lower self meaning the individual aspects and the lower self meaning the lower chakras we have been controlled by our fears we've been controlled by our survival um um uh, so our, our means for survival we have not been told really about the position and, and how our power manifests and how to use our divine authority we've been made to feel like we have no authority so what that does is that creates a corrupted lower self which is the ego and that part of us can be um manipulated it can be usurped against us and and the, the ego is the separated self it's the part of the self that feels separate so like i said before when we look at the energy of the age of pisces it was all about separation all about disconnection and separation in order to learn but in order for us to move into this next stage we have to start to connect everything in the universe moves in an expansion and in a contraction so we have just come out of a of a major expansion which is a seemingly separation so we can learn about what happens within that void space but now we are coming into oneness we're coming into connection and so with that we have to look at what is it that we have learned when we've been apart that doesn't actually um reign as truth in terms of how we connect so this morning when i rose up and i did my meditation and i did my prayers um i i tapped in without even tapping into when i did my meditation and i did my prayers i asked to see whatever truth it is that i need to see for today and i saw two images i saw the image of the um the scale with the heart of the feather and i saw the image of the cross and i saw that one represented life and consciousness and living in truth and one represented outsourcing your consciousness and being governed by something outside of yourself and being disconnected from your heart because the heart is the seat of truth now what we're going through right now is called the bridge zone and i thought that it was quite interesting that the other day as we begin this eclipse we see that there is a bridge that has been broken down because the bridge represents our us being able to shift from the lower self into the higher self right it's that bridge through the heart of connection that allows us to ascend so for the bridge to be broken means that there is a deliberate severing to stop us from being able to connect 
to our higher selves but that's metaphysic and that's symbolic so i was being shown the cross and i was being shown the scale and the message came through from ma'at and ma'at represents divine truth represents divine balance represents divine consciousness when we look at the times of ancient kemet we recognize that different archetypal energies or levels of consciousness came and gave us information that would allow us to understand ourselves beyond our our um lower levels of consciousness because we are in a fallen state within this body but we have access to expanded consciousness and so through the different archetypes and through connecting with the energy of consciousness in these archetypes we receive new truths new knowledge and new information now one thing that spirit says to me is that you cannot receive new water in a dirty class and this is why you have to do the healing this is why you have to do the deprogramming this is why you have to do the clearing of the limiting beliefs so that when you receive truth it can be felt where within the heart right and so Ma'at gave a message this morning and when I say Ma'at gave a message I don't mean a being came to me I tapped into my heart and the message that came through was a message that was given for me and for me to share with others um and so I'm going to share it with you all today um and I hope that you uh, receive it and just let me know your thoughts and your comments in the box below so this is a message from Ma'at that came today this is the time of karmic release the hold and bind that has been on the hearts and minds of, of most of the collective of humanity is being broken. Karmic debts are being cleared and karmic enslavement programs dismantled. There has been an atrocity against humanity and this is being brought into sacred balance now. Ma'at governs this transition and holds the scales of justice in her hand. All hearts are weighed against the feather. The heart holds the sin. So in religion, we talk about sin, S-I-N, but really what sin represents is sign, S-I-N-E, which is the wave, the frequency, the vibration. So your heart holds a frequency and vibration which shifts every time you feel a certain thing, every time you do certain things. And that's why the heart holds the conscious, right? The heart holds the conscious. So when you do something wrong, you can basically lie and you can convince other people that you haven't done what you what you ha know you have done, but your heart, you can't lie to. It will beat in your chest. So the heart is the space of divine consciousness. It's the space of divine truth. So when they talk about sin, they're actually talking about sign, the energy the frequency right and it's that frequency and energy that sine wave which measures the intentions behind whether what you're doing is good positive or whether it's negative or maleficent and it's our heart that records all of the experiences that we go through it's our heart that records the sadness it's the heart that records the joy it's the heart that leads and guides you when it is clear right when it is clear so the heart holds the sin or the sign, the frequency wave pattern that regulates each emotion and, and, is, and is fueled by love. When you go against the heart, you go against truth. And the truth is divinely and organically encoded with light. All sins are forgiven when the heart is purified. So it isn't about something outside of you forgiving you and dying for your sins. It's about you killing your own ego to be able to be humble enough to recognize where you may have erred and, uh, and harmed somebody else. When you look at Kemetic culture, you look at the principles that they have in place, which allow us to live in integrity with other human beings. That time was another time of unity consciousness. That's why it was called the golden age. But we have since come out of those spaces and have been in a realm where we felt disconnected from each other which then also means that we don't feel like we have any responsibility to each other we talk about treat each other how we want to be treated but how can we really hold that commandment truth if we see each other as separate the same bible that was used to enslave and, and control the minds of people inside says on one page do to others as you would do to yourselves but then on another page says that it's okay to enslave and treat people in a certain way these are discourses these are not congruent beliefs these are not congruent and harmonious truths so how can it then teach you how to live if within the own in the information there is contradictions right the heart doesn't know contradiction the heart only knows truth when something feels 
good, it's good. When something is not, it's not. You might have to convince yourself to go against what your heart says. You might have to convince yourself to go against what is true and go into belief because belief doesn't require you to be tapped into your own heart's intelligence. And when you are in a space of belief, then you can be controlled. Why? Because it's not about what you know in belief. It's about what someone can convince you of. And even if the story doesn't make sense, you will accept it because the the collective consciousness is accepting it. This is how belief systems are embedded within you. And whether they are working for you or against you, you don't really know because you don't really understand what it is that you're taking in and the information that you're receiving anyway. So when it talks about him dying for our sins, it takes away the responsibility of each person to recognize the purpose of um, how to live in integrity and why we need to live in integrity. That feeling that we feel when we do something wrong, that is where we harm ourselves. That is the crucifixion of our own hearts. That's the crucifixion of our own truth, right? And so everything has been projected outside of us, given a story of somebody else, which leaves us disconnected from what it is that's actually um, supposed to be happening. And that's the awakening of our own divinity and the awakening of our own connection to the source, right? So the heart is where we connect to the source. The heart is where we connect to each other. The heart is where truth lies. But most of us are turned against going um, with our heart and instead go with our heads or go with the status quo or go with what the current belief system is. And that is what takes us out of alignment. She goes on to say, all sins are forgiven when the heart is purified, whether it's through compassion, whether it's through acknowledgement, whether it's through forgiveness. These are the tonics of the heart that allow the heart to be lightened. When we hold on to grudges, we weigh our hearts down. Pardon me. And then we bring ourselves into that lower frequency of negativity and, and operating from that space. But when we elevate our wrongdoings by recognizing that we have done something wrong, that recognizing that what we have done may have harmed somebody and gaining the wisdom from us uh, reflecting on that, it now becomes wisdom. It now elevates our heart. It now gives us a lesson. And that is the purpose of karma. So when we talk about karmic releasing, karmic healing, karmic clearing, it's about learning. It's about and having an opportunity to learn so that you can change the behavior and bring it more into alignment with a higher frequency thank you for the hearts and the fire i really appreciate that and i really appreciate the support if this is resonating with you then just continue to send that energy right so she goes on to say that all sins are forgiven when the heart is purified when all wrongs are acknowledged and the lessons learned the scales will balance back to zero point now we are in the space of coming into zero point what does that mean if you take the infinity symbol and you place it on its side this is how reality moves it's in a perpetual motion and that's why you see the infinity symbol the infinity symbol is also when turned on its right side the number eight we are in the number eight year right in the middle point of that infinity symbol where the two lines cross that is called zero point that is the center of creation that is the genesis that is the reset point and as 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 we move through time and ages it moves in that same spiral we move through the ages of aries the age of leo the age of taurus into the age of pisces um, capricorn age of pisces um sorry age of taurus age of pisces and now into age of Aquarius. So as we're moving into age of Aquarius, we're moving into what's called zero point. And zero point is the reset. It's the opportunity for you to quantum leap to a higher level of learning or to descend to a lower level of learning, right? And that's where we are right now. So we have a choice. And that's why a lot of us have come into this in, in incarnation at this time. That's why we're doing a lot of the healing work that we're doing. We don't need to heal. But what we do is through understanding the experiences that we've been through and how they've impacted ourselves as humans and then doing the reflection and the unpacking work it gives us wisdom and knowledge that's the whole purpose of the healing to clear away old things that we may have been doing unconsciously to clear away old experiences from the collective of human consciousness so that we become wise so that we can expand in consciousness and move beyond the need for those experiences right simple things like um sexual abuse and all of these kind of things they come from the experience of being separate of thinking that you are separate from each other so only when you think you are separate will you harm another and feel like it doesn't impact on you but as we move and we start sharing our stories and we start healing we start realizing that no actually if i do something to somebody else they're actually feeling that pain and that pain is the same pain that i feel and we are connected and you can see the generations that have been impacted from our collective silence and so we seek to make 
a change. That's the whole reason why we're all going through this healing journey right now so that we can clear our Akashic records, clear out all of those limiting beliefs and programs that don't serve us as we move into this evolved state of being as humans. And so that we can now be the change that we want to see. When you have an end of an age, you've got to do the cleanup. You've got to do the cleanup to understand what is it that we were learning collectively through that past age? What is it that we no longer want to bring into the future as we evolve and expand into a higher state of consciousness and being? We are moving from understanding ourselves as three dimensional, you know, fixed beings to recognizing that we are vibratory beings, that we have an energetic system. Even some of the ailments that people have now, things like fibromyalgia and Crohn's disease, these are all energetic um, conditions. These are all um, um, illnesses that have been developed when people suppress their pain and, and the pain gets pushed into their energetic systems and can still have an impact on their physical. This information, this technology, this awareness that we're coming into is expanding our awareness of what we understand to be human and how we engage in energy. We realize that, okay, when we go through things in our experiences, we feel that on the body, in the mind, in the mental, in the spirit, it all has a purpose. It all has a meaning, but it also is information. So when we deny that and we push it into the energetic spaces, it still has an impact. That's why you're seeing this, the rise in, in understanding trauma, the rise in understanding somatic practices. These were not informations and things that we were tapped into before. Even the way that we lead is going to be different. You're going to see more women in leadership. Why? Because we want, is it, do you think it's because we want to have a female dominated world? No, because we have to be in balance and balance is masculine and feminine energy working in harmony. And that is the original way for the past 2000 years since the um the 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 birth of the image of patriarchy we have been living lopsidedly everything in the universe operates from a place of balance and harmony and reflection as you breathe out a breath goes in so when we are now fixed on the image of one um one reflection one masculine elder reflection of what our divinity looks like we are left off balance, right? And so we are coming back into balance. We are coming back into harmony. We're coming back into wholeness. And, and in order for us to do that, we have to start unpacking the things that we have learned and also start to relearn new things and new ways of being, which you can't do if you are holding on to these beliefs with your dear life, right? You cannot bring new information and new clean water into an empty, sorry, into a dirty glass. So the healing, the clearing, the destabilization of those limited beliefs and those challenging of those mindsets that you have what is what will allow us to clear out the old akashi of what we've been indoctrinated in and allow us to be divine channels for pure information right i was speaking to somebody about this information that i was receiving this morning and they were just giving me all of this information that they received by from youtube and saying oh no but the knights templars did this and they did that and as i was staying in that space of purity i just had to say i don't that, that stuff is knowledge that you have acquired, but you don't know that. We don't know any of that stuff. The only way to actually know is to experience. And yes, we can experience through connecting and asking to know, but we have to also be mindful of just taking in all of this information. Age of Aquarius, yeah? The water bearer is pouring water down constantly. That's the knowledge, information that we're receiving. But if you don't have discernment, if you don't take a step out of the stream of pouring knowledge and take a drink, and see how it tastes and try it out and, and experience it, then you will die because you're just consuming constant knowledge. You will drown in that knowledge. You won't be able to discern truth and you actually end up knowing nothing at all, right? So we have to be very aware of how we're taking in this information and we really have to be aware of what it is that we know and what it is that we believe because belief is not the same as knowing even online there's so many people that tell you this is fact and this is truth and i'm channeling this galactic and this galactic and people are sitting there like okay i'm just taking it in but how do you know you don't the only way you know is to experience for yourself so if somebody is teaching you how to tap in to the divinity within you then that's what's going to help you because that then helps you to be the knower. That then helps you to be able to be that divine channel because we all, we all have that ability. We all have that essence. But on top of this awakening is also another opportunity for people to be suppressed and to be closed. And we will outsource our awakening and our expansion of our knowledge and consciousness 
to other people, to AI and to all of these other technologies outside of ourselves. The opportunity that we have right now is to tap back into the divine technology within ourselves and to elevate ourselves. Um, and so um, let me just go back to what my art was saying as well. So I talked about the fact that zero point is that reset point within the cycle of energy and the cycle of time. So she says, this is where humanity is about to enter into. And this place of zero point is the new beginning and the new cycle. Can you move beyond sin? Can you move beyond causing negativity and harm to yourself? Can you move beyond feeling like you're disconnected from other people? Can you move into recognizing that how you think internally impacts your outside world? How you deal with others is a reflection of how you're dealing with yourself. Can you empty your heart of all of the wounds and live and lead from your heart? Because some of the things that you have been through actually can hold your heart in tightness and not allow it to expand. If you're still holding on to guilt if you're still holding on to shame if you're still holding on to trauma then your heart cannot expand into truth and when it is weighed against the feather it will surely be heavy and that is all the sin as i said is based on the sign the sine wave the energetic vibrational frequency of your heart so if you're holding on to negative thoughts negative emotions that then make you do things that are not nice to whether it's to yourself or to others then you are holding your heart heavy right? Your heart is heavy. When we, when we go through grief, when we go through love, when we say our heart is broken, it's because it's been filled with love and that, that, that disconnection, we can feel it, right? So your heart has its own intelligence. And when we disconnect from our heart, we enter into sin because the heart registers truth. The heart recognizes that we're all connected. And in order for us to harm each other, we have to disconnect from that awareness that we are connected to each other. And that is what has allowed for a lot of the atrocities that happen on this planet Earth. Yes, we have this understanding, this this societal status quo that we're all connected and that each human should be treated fairly. But underneath, that's not the truth. You have cultures and communities of people who are taught as they grow up not to speak to those other groups of people or not to marry those other groups of people or not to connect with those other groups of people, that those groups of people are lower a lower level of humanity than everybody else but then in front of you will preach that we are all one and the same this is why you're seeing the atrocities happening in the world that you're seeing right because the illusion of oneness the illusion of community the illusion of unity is being shattered so that we can really get to the truth and resonance of that because to live from the heart means to live truly connected to each other so it says the heart is divinely encoded to truth. Can you live and walk in your truth? This is what deep, what um, clears karma, karma. Sorry, this is what clears karma, truth, acknowledgement and changed behavior. In this way, karma is a gift and an opportunity. Earth and humanity are being shown their karma and giving an opportunity to reset the collective heart of the planet and within each being. Because as I said, the heart is the bridge to your higher self, to your higher chakras. And all of these higher chakras are all transpersonal. They're all about how you relate and connect to the world. The lower chakras are all about you, which is why it houses your ego and which is why it's connected to your survival and the self. Our purpose is to create a bridge between our lower self and our higher self so that we can be in our Christed state we can be in our evolved state and the foundation and the bridge is love okay love <laughs> right so in in um what am I in this way karma is a gift and opportunity earth and humanity are being shown their karma and given an opportunity to reset the collective heart of the planet and within each being we must feel the pain of others because we are all connected and we have become so desensitized to each other's pain the piscean age was all about separation and leave and living through the illusion of separation it was like the out breath of our experience but the next age is that of unity consciousness. Um, oneness, wholeness and connection. So the heart is the gateway of connection. It's the bridge between the higher and lower self and is the bridge between heaven and earth. That's where your consciousness lies. That's where your truth lies. And it's the first organ that is um, activated when you are in your mother's womb. 
and they cannot tell you how it's activated. A spark just ignites it into being and that spark continues until you die. So your heart is the epicenter of your truth and your consciousness, right? It is what makes us sentient beings, our heart. The heart is the first organ that sparks into being, into the body, and it has its own consciousness and is tapped into divine intelligence. So you have to convince yourself of, of something. You have to convince yourself to disbelieve something that is true. You have to go against what you know in your heart to be true and now engage your mind in order to believe or to live a lie. The heart only knows truth, right? Um... It is by holding and taking account of all of our feelings and emotions that we shift into in vibrational frequency. Our heart holds the memories, the grudges, the hate, the hurt, the love, the empathy, the compassion. It holds the balance. And when we are connected to our hearts, we are connected to truth, which is our conscious. We do not need an external conscience. We do not need an external damnation. We do not need an external judgment. Our heart is the conscience and when we allow ourselves to be tapped back into the truth of our heart then we are tapped back into our consciousness so when you are connected through your heart um sorry let me go back we do not need an external conscience when we are when we are connected to the heart we tap into the intelligence of the heart and the divine consciousness of divine order and if you know Ma'at, she represents divine order as well when you are connected, you truly embody oneness and can fully understand how to love others as you do yourself. But without having that connection to your heart, you can only love others in the way that you've been shown how to love. You can only love others in the way that you've been treated. And most of us have not necessarily experienced pure unconditional love because we are coming from trauma based experiences or a mis misaligned understanding of what love truly is in its full sense. OK, um, let me go back. So when you are connected to your heart you truly embody oneness and can truly understand how to love others as you do yourself but when we are disconnected from others and do not honor our own story our own truth and our own feelings we become distant and connected and disconnected and cut off from each other and when we feel like our own experiences aren't being honored then we don't have the capacity the space or the understanding sometimes to be able to honor those of others the experiences of others and this is how we have come to the current phase in humanity that we have that we are currently in, where you have got groups of people who are being, you know, bombed, abused, all kinds of things. And it's causing up uproar. But there still needs to be more. Right. There needs still needs to be more. There are still many of us scrolling by and just saying, well, you know what? This happens every day. People die every day. People get bombed every day. No, that is not the reality that we are choosing to co-create moving forward. Um, this is how we have come to this current phase in reality where people are disconnected to the pain and atrocities imposed on others and it will not stop until we all recognize or at least 51 percent which is the collective consciousness and um, the collective majority until they recognize that when we hurt one we hurt all this illusion that okay what i do over here doesn't have an effect on anybody else out there is ridiculous and as we are now starting to open up our higher senses of telepathy of being able to connect and feel each other's vibes and emotions we're going to be so in involved in each other's energy spaces that there's no way that we can be standing next to somebody who's speaking love but we can feel hate we will no longer a be able to be able to hide behind false words, right? We'll be able to feel what feels like truth. We'll be able to feel where somebody's heart is really at. And that's what's happening. But that's why we have to clear the heart. We have to clear the heart of all of our limiting beliefs, our programs, our wounds, our past experiences. So the heart can be like the empty glass that it needs to be. And so when energy is moving through it, it can be felt for what it is. Sometimes you walk into a room and you're like, oh, I can feel everybody's vibes. Maybe everybody everybody dislikes me if you have a limiting belief that people dislike you for whatever reason whether it's your gender whether it's your color whether it's what you wear then that is the lens through which you are ex receiving that energy that they're projecting through you does that mean that they are projecting that energy to you from a place of hate no it's just that the lens that you're you're receiving that energy through is tainted and this is why we have to clear 
right as we expand we're now going to be able to be more connected to each other be able to read each other's minds so if we're moving into that space then you can't be trying to pretend and hide you won't be able to you can't say you are love and at the same time you hold malice you can't say you are part um you are for everybody but then at the same time you hold certain beliefs that that exclude others it's not congruent and the heart only knows congruence yeah it's only what is congruent and what is resonant and what is aligned and that is the nature of truth right so she goes on to say this is unity consciousness this is the gift for humanity after the karmic cleanup and it will also expand the consciousness of the collective we are collectively moving into an energetic feeling body we are tr we are tuning into what ourselves beyond 3d comprehension and the heart is the key to bringing all karma into balance and harmony living by your heart and this is why the ancient egyptians talked so much about the heart and when i was in egypt in whatever year i was there i've been there quite a few times i channeled this healing system and one of the aspects of this healing system was being able to go into meditation to go within the sanctuary of your own heart because it is the sanctuary you have the holy tabernacle that's spoken about in the bible that's in your crown and the the center of, of where you connect with the source is in your heart and so in this particular healing system i was guided to show people how to enter into your own heart and how to weigh your heart against the feather every day because our ancient egyptian ancestors they were preparing for the end of life for their hearts to be weighed against the feather whereas we are in a time now where everything is moving fast and we are now being reconnected back to the quantum field so we can consciously go within our hearts every day and weigh it against the feather of truth how have we lived have we lived in congruency with truth have we been um humble to ourselves have we been loving and kind to ourselves and others and that's what allows us to now live in integrity to do that every single day and not wait till you die, you know, to make peace with, with your enemies, to make peace um, with your with your pain, right? To give your pain a voice so that it doesn't weigh down your heart. Because when your heart is free to vibrate, when your heart is free to be, it expands your consciousness. It raises your vibration and taps you into this divine intelligence that's within all things. That's what connects you to everything, your heart. And when your heart is clear, you can receive and you can be in tune with everything. But when our hearts are not clear, when our hearts are, are dirtied with pain and torment and, and, and all of these limiting beliefs and some of these conditioned programs that say this particular kind of person doesn't deserve my love because of X, Y, Z, then we are in conflict with that, with that, with that truth that is opening and awakening within our heart. And how that can also help us is we also start to become more discerning and connected to that internal truth, right? You can learn to trust the wisdom that you get within your heart when you clear your heart of all um, denial, of all doubt, right? Some of the times why people don't believe themselves or when they ask the, the divine for information and they receive the guidance, they don't believe themselves. They don't trust themselves They're because they've been taught against themselves. They've been taught that in order for you to really know something, you have to go to a professional, but you are the professional, right and it's only when your heart is clear can you really tap into that stream of divine intelligence and divine consciousness eighth dimensions is the divine mind right and in order to receive the wisdom of the divine mind you can try and access it through here but it's just information when it comes into the heart it is embodied it is known it is felt and then it can be transmitted it can be expressed this is how we receive information okay so I'm going to go back to what it is that my art brought forward. She said, this is what clears karma, truth, acknowledgement and changed behavior. In this way, karma is a gift and an opportunity and earth and humanity are being shown their karma and given an opportunity to reset the collective heart of the planet. So you saw, see a lot of people talking about the emerald heart, talking about, you know, heart consciousness. It's all within us. It's microcosm, macrocosm. And as we seek to clear our own hearts, as we seek to heal, we now step into love and we can be love. And that raises the vibrational frequency of love on this planet. Even a lot of the prophets and the people that came before us, they speak about this love. They speak about connection, but they had to go through the process of traversing their own inner world in order to find it. So why do you think you're any different? The same Christ, the same Buddha, the same, all of these beings, they all had to go through their own darkness. They all had to go into their own own internal reality their own world their own inner kingdom to find the divine within themselves so why is it that we are outsourcing that experience right this is a time of bringing things back into harmony 
So she goes on to say that we have to learn to feel the pain of others so that we realize that we are connected to hear their stories, to know that we are connected so that we can then encourage and implore right behavior. Because once we are aware of something, then we can now be the change. We can have changed action. You might not have known that people were being trafficked and still being enslaved in Sudan. But now you do know what are you going to do? You might not have known that this particular group of people were suffering, but now you do know what are you going to do? And that is what the awakening is for. That is what the awakening is encouraging in all of us. OK, so um, it says here that the Piscean age was all about separation and living through illusion and that we are now moving into truth. Your heart is what holds intelligence. It's what allows you to be a sentient being. And it's the space of divine consciousness and divine order. But when we're disconnected from others, when we're disconnected from our own truth, our own pain, our own story, we cannot hold others in a space of love. And that's what's caused us to be in this space that we are energetically for humanity. But as we're moving into this space of unity consciousness, we have to learn to see ourselves. OK, but everything so far has been teaching us about illusion and has been taking us away from the divinity within ourselves. And so this time is about us being able to get those keys back to access the divinity that is within us. OK, so she says, remove the bands of illusion and test your beliefs your conditioning and your programming what have you been taught about different people different communities that has allowed you to diminish their pain or demonize their practices or your connection to their path or story the biggest illusion that humanity has been sold is the illusion of separation and to divide and conquer has been the strategy of the piscean age and this is the age where human consciousness fell the most so if you look at the timeline of human consciousness this past two thousand years is when we have been in our lowest state almost in a state of slavery because when you do not know who you are when you do not know how to free yourself when you do not have access to all of the things that are available to you then you are controlled and in a way enslaved even by the things that you think that have been imposed on you right so she says in no other time do you see mass enslavement and i said mass not pockets of enslavement but mass enslavement of the masses and they don't even know that they're enslaved governments and leaders lead without authority or appointment by the people if you look at uk politics we have not we have not chosen a prime minister in god knows how long why because they are just perpetually fulfilling their own prophecy within their own system and we are not even arguing against it amongst our groups we might be saying anything but on the global stage what are we doing which then gives them the allowance to do these things the scales of justice have been in balance for some time and now the balance of karma now swings in the favor of truth unity and oneness we are part of a collective multi-dimensional reality we have senses way beyond our current five you actually have 12 senses connected to the 12 strands of your dna but each one of your senses is connected to your level of consciousness so as we start to expand beyond the the um, five senses and moving to like, let's say even the feeling senses and the awareness of our ability to feel each other's vibes to read each other's energy these are senses that before were not available to us so we are expanding beyond our understanding of ourselves as these limited vibrational beings and so even the way that we perceive and receive information is going to be different we are expanding so that illusion of separation can no longer exist okay um now is the time for us for humanity to rise what did you learn in your fallen state was the question that was asked and what are you here to co-create how can you clear your heart who can you clear from your heart what needs to be forgiven and what needs to be healed and brought back into balance and into love because the heart must also be free to protect love sometimes we we, we won't even step out and help somebody because of the fear of how it may impact us right but when your heart is free to love you realize that that same will and strength is going to propel you to do what's right not what keeps you safe but what's right and to do what's right is to move out of love right to move from love so what false perceptions have you been told about others and internally hold check your unconscious bias beliefs and conditionings question the things that you do through blind faith and seek the deeper meaning and purpose you are free she says free your heart and your mind 
release the karma, learn the lesson and be the blessing. This is the reason for being at this time. The generational healing and quantum healing across bloodlines and generations is needed. Each earth community holds the key for the other and, and they have been brainwashed into separa separation and survival. The spell has now been broken and this eight year is about the chains. These chains are being broken and you are the chain breakers. <laughs> eight people on the live this dragon energy is also the breaker of chains and if you know game of thrones the queen of dragons was the breaker of chains so this energy of this year is all about breaking the chains breaking the chains of illusion breaking the chains of deception breaking the, ch the chains of karmic patterning it's an opportunity for us to wake up and create co-create a new reality she said break the spells and illusions on your mind body and spirit your practices and your beliefs challenge them this is the time to move beyond belief and into knowing you must become the knower let that sink in because the the, the bible is a book of metaphysical stories that if you utilize them you can learn from them but they are parables they are stories so to be the knower means to become he who knows because when you look at the story of noah he was given the guidance to say that the old world was going to be um, destroyed and that he needed to create an ark an ark an ark is a bridge yeah ark is a bridge that will take him from the old world that was being destroyed into this new one and even though he tried to tell everybody that you know what there's going to be a storm and there's going to be a flood and everybody's going to die they didn't believe him why because they believed in the status quo when he said that god told him himself they said well how do you know that god told you and that was the question right but he knew and through his faith and his conviction, he followed the divine guidance that nobody else received. And when it, the time came to pass, everybody else was destroyed. So that's the difference between being the knower and the believer. The believer is one who is convinced, who has built his house on sand. But the knower is the one who tests the spirit. The one, the knower is the one who is connected. The one, who, the knower is the one who received the truth in his heart and knows that it is true and is willing to act on that truth regardless of what everybody else is saying now when we are in our divinity when we're tapped into source that is the vibrational frequency that we are coming from and when it is truth it will be resonating and it will be felt so it wouldn't be only me as the knower knowing it will resonate and there will be other people who tap into that frequency of truth who will align with each other right but the individual has to be tapped in and in order to be tapped in, you have to get rid of all of these limiting beliefs that say that God can't talk to you, that the divine can't talk to you, like that you can't connect with the source within, that you can't trust yourself, that you can't trust the guidance within. That's why we do the healing work. That's why we clear the ego. That's where we start to understand the internal landscape so that we can differentiate between all of the different aspects of our self communicating with ourselves so that we can discern between the divinity in ourselves and we can discern between the ego in ourselves. Right. That's the whole purpose. And that's why it always says the first law or the first tenant is man know thyself, because when you know yourself, then you know how to operate. Then you become the knower. He who does not know himself and he who is informed of who he is by others is a slave because you don't know you believe so if i take a a, a a um a monkey and a monkey baby and i take it into my home and i raise it like a human and i tell it that it's a human it's gonna think that it's a human even though it is a monkey this is the same thing for us right and because our, our understanding and perception of who it is that we are has been indoctrinated whether it be through fear whether it be through through um bloodshed it has had an impact and so we have to do the clearing work to uncover and clear out some of those beliefs that are in conflict with what we actually know and feel as truth. And that's why you cannot stand on anything and you have to recognize that you're always changing, that you do not know everything and that, that you will come into different levels of truth the more that your heart is open to receiving truth, right? Because you can't know everything and the, and the whole purpose of us is that as we learn and we grow, we learn new things that actually take away the old things that we fought and, and so we can't still have that old stuff in our head saying okay well I still have that there but I don't believe that anymore or that doesn't go into congruency with the truth that I know now no you have to clear that you have to get rid of it otherwise it's corrupt and it will corrupt you 
okay so it says the scales of balance of justice have been in balance for some time and now the balance of karma now swings in the favor of truth unity and oneness it's time to break the spell and she says you have everything available to learn to do the work to shift the energy and the vibration for all of humanity all you have to do is do your part all you have to do is do your healing all you have to do is do you know your part of the purpose of the journey um, and that's what you're here to do start with yourself illuminate all darkness wounds beliefs programs and illusions and liberate yourself individually from the false death based religions and ideologies and choose life choose nature choose truth choose balance you are that which you have been reading about that you've been studying about it's all you and you are the child of god spoken about but you are no longer asleep or dead you are awake you are risen and you will illuminate the divine in you now is the time so clean your heart heal and transform and be become that which you came here to be and tap and choose to tap into truth commit to truth because truth is the currency of the heart she says the time is now to open your heart heal and remember because we are the change that we want to see and the scales of balance now shift in our favor you have the chance to clear the slate you have the chance to be the change it's time now and you are loved and supported in this collective mission in 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 time so in this time for humanity free your mind and the rest will follow i know that was a pretty long download right but when i received it this morning it kind of just made my heart vibrate and it was like okay this actually relieves us from some of the the conflict that we experience when we see that an old paradigm is ending and a new paradigm is beginning and it's interesting because when i finished and i was reading that to um one of my daughters her picture fell <laughs> and this is the picture that fell and i picked up this picture at a charity shop it was a gift but what it represents is the ancient matriarchal energy um the ancient matriarchal energy that has been missing from the collective image of divinity mother god father god feminine energy but also within her hand she's holding the tapestry and this tapestry represents the thread of humanity the thread of human consciousness and why it dropped was because truth is being said right we are in the time of balance rebalancing and reharmonizing and bringing everything back into balance and the only way that we can do that is through seeing and reflecting on the things externally that are showing us that we are not in harmony and balance with truth and also doing the same with ourselves internally this is why there is this desire not even desire this call for us to do the healing work internally so that we can clear the karma so that we can learn the lessons and we can come into the consciousness of truly living from the heart the christ archetype spoke about this but now we get to really understand how to do that in this time so that was the download <laughs> we have had loads of people coming in and coming out of this transition so i really want to give thanks if you do have anything that you want to share anything that you want to say uh, before i close off then please 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 do um i have been working real hard over the past couple of days um developing some new some new works that i will be um intro introducing over the next couple of days um but yeah just really appreciate those who have tuned into this transmission if you do tune into it later please do let me know your thoughts and let me know how it resonates with you um and yeah i just want you to understand and know that everything that we are experiencing at this time is not separate and that we are moving into oneness and harmony and so in order for us to do that we have to be willing to do the clearing work that allows us to live not from our heads but from our hearts and from hearts that are clean um and hearts that feel and know love that is the purpose of what it is that we are here to do right now and so i'm wishing you all a blessed 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 weekend um whatever you're doing and however you choose to celebrate it but for me the message was to really unpack the limiting beliefs that are in conflict 
with the truth that is awakening within my heart and the truth that is awakening from really connecting to the resonance of what it is that the Christ archetype came to share with us or share with us or that story gifts us. It helps us to know that the source lies within us and that we are to keep our hearts light so that we can be the recipients of divine truth and divine love. And so as we move into this next cycle, I pray for healing and peace and power for each and every one of you. And I look forward to connecting with you very soon. Much love. Thank you, Johnny Hole. He said, as always, thank you so very much for your powerful words. Lots of love. And Angelo says, you've awakened my self-belief. Well, good. Well, then that means that I've done my work for the day. <laughs> so thank you thank you thank you fabulosa said thank you for sharing wishing everyone the day that they deserve and i send those same blessings and wishings to you have a blessed 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 day